Hey, what's up, fellas? I'm Alicia's female fan. Steve is just here with something a little bit different today. A device from way back, a device that I always wanted but never could get my hands on. The Palm Trio 700P. This is the Sprint version, but it was CDMA, so Sprint and Verizon seem to be the main carriers for the Trio devices. And I always had Verizon up until I got an iPhone. So a friend of mine and I, Keith, we always love getting new phones on Verizon. Go on eBay, and it was cheap back then. It didn't, you didn't have to take out a mortgage to, to keep switching your cell phones in and out. We got the Razors that way, got Blackberries. I was using my Blackberry 7200 from eBay, and it was great. You call them up, you give them the new ESN, and you were back online. But this one was always a touch too expensive. And I remember sitting there. My, fr he, my friend got one. He loved it. I always remember looking at it, how cool it was. I'm sitting there. I can remember the night I'm sitting on eBay. It was between this at about $250 or a Motorola Q at $200. And I went with the Motorola Q. And don't get me wrong. I love my Motorola Q. I still have it. I may do a video on it someday. It worked really well. But I always regretted not getting one of these. And now on eBay, super cheap, new in the box. So I'll explain why I got the Sprint version, even though I have AT&T. We'll get to that a little bit later. But it is the... Trio 700P, the P being this is the Palm OS operated one, Palm 5.4 to be exact. There was the 700W, there was 9 million versions of this. There was a 700 series, then the 755, then there was the 750, then there was a 680, which actually came out after the 700, that was the GSM one for AT&T, but this is the 700P. So then you had the 700W that was Windows Mobile operated and that one, while at the time I feel was a bit better, a bit more conducive to a mobile phone, I feel like it integrated a bit better with the phone functionality. You also have a little bit more multitasking available on Windows Mobile of the day. As these devices have moved into obscurity, I feel like the worm has turned in terms of utility. These are a lot more useful today than the Windows Mobile devices. Those are, those are basically paperweights at this point, but... With the shareware, the freeware, all the stuff, the uh, software that was available for Palm devices, you could throw it on this guy right here. So let's take a look at the box. I'll include somewhere around here where the unboxing portion actually starts. But in the meantime, we're going to ramble a little bit. So, Sprint version. We've got Sprint Power Vision Smart Device. Just all the words there. So that's nice that they're just throwing it out of the box to see what the side of the box says. Data services on this Sprint Power... They're just... They're going with it. Are designed exclusively for on the for use on the Sprint High Speed Wireless Data Network. That would be 2G at the time. Voice and Sprint PCS. You know when the, when the box still says PCS, you know you know you're in trouble. You're going back quite a ways. Designed exclusively on the nationwide Sprint. That's fine. Sprint power. Yeah, yeah. Lithium ion stereo. All the stuff that comes with it. System requirements: Windows 2000 or XP, and Mac OS 10.2.4. I always something. This was even from from the start. Palm devices and Palm OS always did a great job of supporting the Mac. If you remember, late 90s, early 2000s, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world to have consumer devices support Mac OS 9 like the original Palms did and the handsprings out of the box. So I, I know the ones that were designed for Mac OS, but just general consumer devices that weren't necessarily designed specifically for the Mac, it was tough. So to have Palm be so supportive of the Mac it certainly helped me out a lot. And I used them, and I loved them, and we're going to be able to sync this one up through USB to an older Macintosh laptop, which is what I'm going to do. So, Sprint Power Vision Network. We got some TV. It looks like MythBusters there. Wireless email enabled. Very exciting. On demand. That's the television. We had a two by two inch display, 320 by 320. You can look. You can hook up your AOL and Yahoo email. Which, if you're leading, the first one listed is AOL. Gmail always comes in third. Gmail gets the bronze medal. So you, you know the year that you're dealing with here, 2006. 60 megabytes of dedicated user storage. So you get a massive, massive amount of stuff for your emails. If you remember, Palm, Palm programs took up nothing. They took up absolutely nothing. They were great. Well optimized and very small for the utility that they provide. So let's, okay, I've waited so long. I waited 15 years. Let's unbox this. There it is. 
And I've had a, a, a bad string of luck on eBay recently, but I got two purchases, this being legit new in box and another one being legit open box that I'm really excited about. It's going to be in another video, but let's go ahead. The manual's here. I'm sure I'm going to read this. I'm sure I'm going to need some software, some desktop software, but that's quite nice. Still packaged. Going to need to read some of that. Special offer Sprint PCS subscribers, $100 cash back. I don't see an expiration on here, do you? Uh, all right, we're going to have to take a look at that. Oh, Audible. I'm surprised Audible was even around there. Read this first. Well, we're not most certainly not going to do that. But we'll go ahead and look. This basically just how to put the battery in and all those things. The talk button. Very exciting information that we need here. And then here it is. I always wondered how these would feel in the hand. And believe it or not, I had a chance to get the 755. That's the, that did have, I don't think it had Wi-Fi. This didn't even have Wi-Fi. I had a chance to get the 755, but I wanted the one with the antenna. Because I thought that was the cool looking one. The one with the antenna was the one that you wanted. My keyboard's not that bad. Let's go ahead and get this out of the bag. My keyboard's a little bigger than I thought. It's not quite a stylus needing to be able to type. You could kind of do it. It's going to be... It's hunt and peck. You're not going to be going crazy like you do on a BlackBerry, but otherwise not quite bad. 180 grams, so not completely out of line despite the bulk with the devices, current devices now. Overall, that's a nice feel to that, though. Nice feel. We're going to be battery here. Decent half. Let's see what else you got in the box back in 2006. Wall charger, useful. A little set of headphones, and this is going to be useful because this is the 2.5 millimeter. Remember when they did that? 2.5 millimeter headphone jack. This is the adapter for something. Looks like, oh, this is the adapter for the. No, it didn't even have it on it. Does it not even have the high? Does it even have it on it? I don't know. There it is. I wonder what this adapter's for then. We'll have to see. Maybe that's for 3.5 adapter. We'll have to I guess we could read the manuals at some point. And then this is the USB cable to sync with your desktop software to get stuff on it. So let's take a look at this. Very nice. Peel the plastic off. Since it's been on there for the last 15 years. Oh yeah, I'm gonna like this. Okay, so now, the reason why I got the Sprint one, because I heard there's anecdotal evidence on the internet, on Reddit, so we're gonna see how much we could, we could but this is where I need your help, all right? There's rumor, as of six months ago, that if you had a Sprint line, or I guess now it's T-Mobile, that there are rogue customer service agents that who know how to disregard basically the automatic activation servers for the CDMA 2G devices that have gone offline. But if you find somebody in customer service that's able to bypass it and knows how to manually set one of these up, you could still use it. That's the rumor. I've heard this a few different times that these are, and I believe it because I had a work phone with Sprint and up until a few years ago, and I'm talking two years ago, not a few, I should say, two or three years ago, you would get one X in building somewhere. So I know the network is there. And unlike AT&T, which I have AT&T, but the reason why I didn't go with AT&T is because their 3G is basically gone forever, never to come back. So even, even 2G is a non-starter. It's basically deactivated. 3G, they give me trouble not activating phones. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we have a shot on Sprint. So, two things. Number one, we're going to try that. We're going to call customer service, every single one of them in America, and see until we get somebody that's going to activate this bad boy for me. And the second thing, if you like these older devices, there's an excellent channel. His name is Abraham Muller. And he does some really neat, because this doesn't have Wi-Fi. But it has Bluetooth. And he does some really neat stuff with connecting this to the internet over Bluetooth, some terminal stuff, stuff that's well above my pay grade. But uh, his channel link will be in the description. But lots of cool projects if you're interested in these older Palm devices. So listen, I need your help. If you still use one of these in the United States, let me know below. If you are if you had success recently activating one in the United States through Sprint, let me know. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Wish me luck. I'm going to need it. But we're getting this bad boy activated. I'm using this. I'm using this in 2021. If there's a 2G network active in the United States that can handle a CDMA ESN, Steve Alicious is the one that's going to hunt it down. Until next time, have that Steve Alicious day.